Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 19th of July and we are going to deal with three very important topics which are in news. The first is surge in terror attacks in Jammu and Kashmir. Basically that portion that is Jammu region south of Peer Panjal range, we have seen a surge in terror attacks over there. This region was largely peaceful since 2003. Militancy was at an all-time low over there after this Operation Sarp Vinash happened over there. But in the recent past, we have seen increased number of killings of the security forces personnel and the civilians over there. Reasons among a few are complacency among the security forces, diversion of security forces towards LAC, then excess dependence on technology for intelligence gathering and ignoring on-ground intelligence gathering. So, things like these are point or are, are can be the reason for this increased surge in terrorist activities over there. Next is factors causing increased rainfall in the current in the current situation in the country. See, uh, rainfall in the past few weeks, one, uh, one week or 10 days has increased and has spread to all across the country. More than 80% of the country is has received rainfall. So, there are few reasons responsible for it. Winds coming with moisture laden uh, I would say moisture laden winds coming from the Arabian Sea side, that is the main cause of monsoon. Those winds are blowing rapidly. Second, there is this trough, monsoon trough, which is moving north and south, which is bringing rain in the entire country almost. And, you know, we are experiencing or we are expecting more than above average rainfall in the country this year due to these reasons. Then, the last is students protest in Bangladesh. The students are out on the streets in Bangladesh. Reason, the High Court in Bangladesh has redeclared reservation for the freedom fighters and their family members up to which was 30% earlier, which was scrapped in 2018, but now it has been reinstated. This has caused a lot of furor in the country where people are demanding to scrap the reservation and there should be no reservation. So, that is what it has led to in Bangladesh. After that, we will come to the MCQs and then we will discuss the MCQs of yesterday. Now, surge in terror attacks in Jammu and Kashmir. So, Jammu and Kashmir, we can see this entire territory which is, you know, has been disturbed since independence. So, basically, if I divide Jammu and Kashmir, this is the Kashmir region, this is the Jammu region and this is Ladakh like this and here the blue lines which you are seeing is the Peer Panjal range south of Peer Panjal range Poonch, Rajori, Jammu in these areas the terrorist activities have increased in 2024. In this topic we are going to discuss the reasons behind this increase. Now, Since 2021 areas south of Peer Panjal range including Poonch, Rajori and Jammu have seen a surge in high intensity terror targeting security forces and civilians as well. So, we need to look into the reasons and we need to address these reasons as timely as possible. But yes, this region that is south of Peer Panjal in numbers, how it, how it looks like or how it has been over the past 2-3 years, we should look at it as well. The number of attacks over the years, there were three attacks each in Jammu region against security forces in 2022 and 2023. Six attacks have been recorded so far this year. So, number of attacks this year has doubled already and we are in July. That is almost the mid of the year. So, let's see by the end of the year, this number six goes to where? Security forces killed. Six security forces personnel were killed in 2022. This increased to 21 in 2023 and stands 11 this year till now in July. Militants killed. Five militants have been killed in the region this year, means 2024. In 2023, this figure was 20 and 2022, this was 14. Civilians killed. 11 civilians have been lo have lost their life in the attacks this year. So, there are, I would say, various gaps or probable reasons which, you know, we are analyzing. But that why this increase in terror activities in that area, which was largely, I would say, silent 
since 2003. In 2003, there was an operation conducted by the Indian Armed Forces. That operation was called as Operation Sarp Vinash. After that, militancy had almost, you know, been controlled over there in that region. But again, we are seeing this to happen. Now, the probable reasons, complacency among the security forces. The security forces might have become complacent ki bhai, it is okay. We, this is under control. This area is under control. After Sarp Vinash happened in 2003 and after that, you know, normalcy was restored. So, security forces now might have been of this viewpoint ki bhai, things are okay, things are under control. But as soon as they are thinking like this, the complacency is creeping in, problems are happening. Diversion of troops towards LAC. The troops reduction in the region with the movement of forces to the line of actual control in 2021 led to an increased area of responsibility for each battalion, contributing to increased revisit time by every patrol. So, we are having a problem with China since 2020 in the Galwan Valley region, the troops have been diverted over there. Less troops stationed over here in this region means they will, their frequency will reduce of patrolling. There will be, they will be taking more time to patrol one area and then revisit that area again. So, that time gap is more. In that time gap, when the security forces are away, terrorists are you know, creeping in. Increased dependency on technology. A top security official also pointed out that with increased dependency on technology, there is a likelihood of a reduced ground connect. Now, security forces were engaged in, you know, having more and more dependence upon technology for intelligence gathering. And this more and more dependence for intelligence gathering on technology has not enabled them to go at the ground level. And collect intelligence and, uh, you know, connect with the local people. So, that connect has been broken and this has been taken advantage of by the militants. Now, attacks near the international border. So, basically, you need to understand this international border. This is basically LOC, the uh, red line which I am drawing. And then we have one border over here in the Jammu region. This blue colored border which I have drawn over here, this is referred to as international border. So, more and more attacks are being witnessed over here from the international border. More and more infiltration is happening from the international border, not through the LOC. So, the recent attacks westwards of Jammu in the Kathua Samba region also point towards another trend of carrying out attacks that is close to the international border. So, attacks near the international border are happening. Unlike Rajori and Poonch, these areas, even though part of Jammu region, come under the Army Western Command. And this Army Western Command does not undertake counter-terror operations. It has never undertaken counter-terror operations. Infiltration along the IB is comparatively easier than the LOC. So, infiltration from here, from the international border with Pakistan, is comparatively easy. From, with respect to the infiltration from here to the LOC. So, that is why, you know, we are seeing increased number of attacks. Another reason is lack of motivation among the forces. Earlier, what used to happen, promotion of SPOs to constables, they are on the back burner due to centralization of powers in the Jammu and Kashmir police. So, this has also demotivated the Jammu and Kashmir police, I would say, personnel especially at the lower ranks. So, they are not so much interested, they are not so much motivated. So, by they are relaxed, they are complacent. Sophisticated equipments and weapons and increasing narco-terrorism. So, narco-terrorism is on the rise in Kashmir. Narco-terrorism simply means drug supply, drug consumption and all. So, last year there was a report in the Indian Express which was talking about increased drug consumption in Jammu and Kashmir. So, people who are indulging into, you know, distributing drugs, selling drugs, they are earning money out of it and terrorists are enabling the supply of drugs for them. Th those people, the locals who are indulging in kind of supplying drugs and all have more affinity towards the terrorist organizations. So, this is happening. Officials also said militants are bringing sophisticated equipment such as night vision glasses, M4 rifles. Plus, they have also increased instance instances of narco-terrorism facilitated by both people and drones. So, several drones transporting drugs, explosive weapons and money have been caught in the region by security forces in the last few years. So, this is basically 
Kashmir moving towards another evil that is organized crime. Sophisticated weapons are being used. That is, uh, you know, part of terrorism only. But yes, drug consumption, drug trafficking and all happening, especially with the usage of drones and all. So this is narco terrorism. The terrorists are creeping in the society, benefiting those people who are consuming drugs, supplying drugs, selling drugs. And that is increasing the menace over there. That needs to be controlled. If we need to win in Kashmir, we need to focus simultaneously on the hard power first and the soft power, that is development. We need to win the hearts and minds of the people over there in Jammu and Kashmir. We need to do that. Then only some positive outcome will be witnessed. Next is factors causing increased rainfall in the country. So for the first time this season, the southwest monsoon is active over a large geographical area of India. At least 80% of the country last week reported widespread rainfall. With heavy to very heavy spells lashing Assam, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Gujarat, coastal Maharashtra and Karnataka, Kerala and Lakshadweep. So almost entire country means 80% of the country is receiving increased amount of rainfall. We could experience this in our nearby areas. Now, what are the factors responsible for this increased rainfall? So, there have been largely two factors responsible for this increased rainfall. The first factor is continuous incoming of moisture-laden strong westerly winds from the Arabian Sea. So, these are these strong westerly winds which are gathering the moisture from here and then continuously they are coming in, bringing this moisture and shedding this moisture in the form of rainfall over here in the country. That is why, you know, increased rainfall. Second such factor is this monsoon trough which we are seeing the monsoon trough is what it is a semi permanent low pressure zone low pressure attracts winds from high pressure so winds are coming from here you could see in the last slide also increasingly they are coming and this trough is a low pressure zone which is attracting these winds so roughly to understand it wherever the trough goes rainfall increases over there the intensity of rainfall increases over there it is a semi-permanent low pressure area, the trough extending between Pakistan and the Bay of Bengal during the monsoon season, which usually oscillates between north and south within the season. So this monsoon trough is oscillating. There is another monsoon trough which is along the coast that is also active right now. So whenever it moves towards the south, this monsoon trough, this move towards the south, as it has done in the present case, more rainfall can take place in the central, eastern and peninsular India. So this moving south will be bringing rainfall to this entire region. When it shifts towards the north, the Himalayan foothills are likely to receive more rainfall. The Himalayan foothills over here, they are likely to receive more rainfall if it moves north, this trough. So this movement of trough can be witnessed. Apart from it, this particular trough is also active. We will see. So these were the two main reasons. But yes, there are other factors also. One such factor is persistence of an offshore trough. So, as I was saying that offshore trough, this, this trough is called as offshore trough. This is also present right now. A shallow trough of low pressure which develops along India's coast during the monsoon between South Gujarat and North Kerala for more than a week now. It has been developed. The intermittent development of a wind shear zone. This wind shear zone is where winds move with different velocities and directions along latitudes 20 degree north between central and peninsular India. Development of a low pressure system over the west central bay of Bengal of the Odisha coast on Monday. This happened. The system moved over Chhattisgarh and adjoining Vidarbha. Vidarbha is that region in Maharashtra and all on Tuesday. So the movement is there. And over southeast Madhya Pradesh on Wednesday. So central India is receiving more rainfall because of this movement of that low pressure zone. So these are the reasons which are responsible for increased amount of rainfall and that is good for the country as of now. Next is students protest in Bangladesh. Well, students are protesting in Bangladesh as you can see in this particular image. Reason? They do not want reservation to come. The reservation which was there earlier, scrapped in 2018. Again, the High Court in Bangladesh have said Ki bhai, that reservation has to be given back. What is the level of reservation? Let us see first of all. So, 
Bangladesh also, just like India, government jobs are coveted jobs. They are considered to be stable, good jobs. Nearly 4 lakh graduates compete every year for around 3,000 such jobs. The similar kind of competition can be witnessed in India. Until 2018, 56% of the government jobs were reserved for various categories. What were these categories? 30% reserved for family members of veterans who had fought for Bangladesh's liberation in 1971. 10% women and people whom for, from underdeveloped districts of Bangladesh. 5% members of tribal communities and 1% reserved for persons with disabilities. Now, this is 56% in total. Only 44% of openings are available for open admissions or general category we can consider. Now, this system was scrapped in 2018, but now with the judgment of the High Court, this has been reinstated. And that is why students are protesting. So, reasons. The protests erupted in the wake of June 5 ruling by the Bangladesh High Court reinstating the 30% quota for freedom fighters and their descendants in government jobs, which was repealed in 2018 after a massive agitation led by students and teachers back then in 2018 also. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina further added fuel to the fire. When she saw this students and all protesting, she called them Razakars. Razakars is a derogatory Bangla word for traitors with some grim historical baggage because this word was too much popular during the Bangladesh's freedom struggle as well. These people who are protesting are saying that this is a way by which the government promotes those who are very much close to the Awami League party. Awami League is the ruling party over there. Sheikh Hasina is from the Awami League and she is the Prime Minister of Bangladesh. Actually, Awami League was the, I would say, leading party in the freedom struggle of Bangladesh. So, Awami League now is in power since 2009, wants to take only those people who are, you know, close to Awami League or who will talk the, you know, language of Awami League only. Why was this quota contentious? The freedom fighters quota was particularly contentious since many people perceived it to be favoring those loyal to Hasina's party the Awami League, which handed the, which headed the Bangladeshi liberation struggle. So, many people say that she is favoring those people. Adding to people's frustration where the special examination for quota candidates wearing age limits for each category and the fact that there remained many vacancies in quota seats even as eligible candidates in the merit list were unemployed. So, this happened. They were given more preferences like it is happening here also. Cutoffs are lowered. Age relaxation is given more and more. But I wonder that people, students and all in Bangladesh are protesting for increasing the reservation, which actually should reduce with the time. In India, the politicians are talking about increasing the reservation because of vote bank. If reservation is increased here in India, this can also happen. Violent protests on the streets. So, India should be watching it very carefully and we should be hoping and praying for peace in Bangladesh. Now, coming to the MCQs, which of these districts of JNK lie to the south of Pir Panjal range? Rajori, Poonch and Srinagar. You have to find the correct combination from these. Which of the following can be probable cause of rising militant activities in JNK recently? Indian forces becoming complacent. Increased dependency on technology for intelligence gathering. Which of these statements are correct? Third, consider the following statements and mark the correct one. Monsoon trough is a zone of high pressure. The intensity of rainfall is dependent upon the position of monsoon trough. Which of these statements is are true? Which of the following factors can lead to increased rainfall in India? The persistence of an offshore trough, a negative Indian Ocean dipole. I am giving you this particular statement from the topic which we did last month in June on monsoon only. So, you can interconnect this concept of monsoon which we read today and the mon uh, concept of monsoon which we read last month. So, it was somewhere in the beginning of the June only we covered this topic. So, you know, carefully answer this. Which of the following statements with respect to reservation system in Bangladesh is R2? The freedom fighters get the maximum share in reservation. 
the tribals get the least, least share in reservation. Only one, only two, both one and two, neither one, not two. So answer these questions carefully. Now coming to the MCQs of yesterday. Consider the following and mark the correct statement. First, all the services allotted after clearing UPSC CSE are referred to as All India Services. So this is relatively very simple statement. Not all the services. Only IAS and IPS after clearing UPSC Civil Services Examination. And third service which is All India Services, Indian Forest Service. So this statement is wrong. There is mention about All India Services in the Constitution. Yes, Article 312 mentions about all India services in the constitution. So, this statement is correct. So, only two is going to be the right answer to this question. Second, consider the following statements and mark the correct one. An all India service officer can receive gifts from near relatives. This is true. Can receive gifts. If the value of the gift is above 50,000, it is 25,000 then declaration has to be made to the government. So, this statement becomes wrong and this is the correct answer to this, that is A. Third, how many of the following provisions are available with the probationary IAS officer? So, when, when someone is in probation, what kind of provisions or what kind of facilities are available with them? They are allotted an official residence, they are allotted an official vehicle, they are allotted an, a constable, nothing, nothing, nothing. They are all allotted these after they become a confirmed officer when they pass that exam which happens after two years. So, none of the statements are correct. This is the correct option of this particular question. In what circumstances can an IAS officer be discharged from duty in case of misconduct with the public? See, it is written in the rules, but yes, warnings and all are given earlier. So, this is not the case. In case of furnishing wrong documents for gaining employment, yes, if it is proven in this case. Wait a bit. In case of using a red beacon during probation, not allowed as per rules, but yes, warning will be given. That person will not be laid off. So, this is wrong. Both B and C is wrong. The B only is the correct answer of this particular question. Now, the last question, consider the following statements and mark the correct one. First is the concept of creamy layer is applicable in the OBC category only and not in SC and ST. Yes, this statement is true. It is applicable only in the OBC category, not in SC, ST. For an individual whose either of the parents have gone to a government service is not eligible for the quota under the creamy layer concept. Either of the parents, if they have gone into the group A services before the age of 40, that is a condition. So, this statement is wrong. So, in any government service, no, in any group A service of the government, there are group B services also. So, that is why these two things make it wrong. The concept of creamy layer is applicable to those individuals whose parents are working in the private sector. This statement is correct. 8 lakh rupees per annum should be the, I would say, upper limit of the income. If the income is above that, then that person belonging to an OBC will be considered as a creamy layer. So, 1 and 3 are going to be the correct answers for this and this is the B option is the correct answer for this particular question. Now, with this, we come to an end of today's session. I will be seeing you tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces. Till then, you guys very well know what to do. I am not repeating it today. Namaste. Jai Hind.